Uh, yeah, my name is Saskia Nybig, um, and I grew up in Woodcraft Folk from the age of five, which is quite young to start with. But yeah, I've been involved on and off since I was five. <coughs> don't want to knock that. Um, since I was five, and uh, when I got a bit older, I got involved with being a leader myself in Woodcraft Folk, and was briefly a trustee for two years. Not anymore. It's a lot less work not to be. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I, I help out. I've helped out in various parts of Woodcraft Folk, both as a young person. Well, I'm still a young person, but um, <laughs> as an adult as well. Um, uh, so I'm not very used to addressing this kind of average age. Usually, usually I'm talking to 13-year-olds. Like, um, but uh, yeah, so Woodcraft Folk, for those who don't know, is a national children and youth organisation. Uh, it works on a model of like local groups meet on a weekly basis or so in their areas. We have, I have no idea how many groups we have. We have around 15,000 members across the country. Um, and we work with organisations in other countries. We're part of a huge, huge international umbrella organisation delivering social and political ed education. Um, and our education is very much steered by our volunteers on what they find interesting. And a big recurring issue has always been peace and has always been social justice. Um, when Woodcraft Folk was founded in 1925, a lot of what they did was took inner city kids to the countryside because otherwise they wouldn't see the countryside and took them camping for as cheap as possible and gave them enjoyable holidays with education as well. Uh, that's still a cool part of what we do. And I recently read an article in The Guardian, I think by George Monbio, sort of saying kids aren't feral enough today. And one thing we definitely do is take kids to the countryside and just let them run wild. And I think that's a fantastic part of education. And a lot of kids don't get that very much anymore. And uh, they, they, their parents are working just too many hours to be able to take them away. <coughs> It's uh, seen as sometimes irresponsible to take your kids to the countryside and let them run wild. Or schools don't feel comfortable taking kids on holiday to the countryside anymore. And the result is that very few people have opportunities to do that kind of thing unless they join local cadet groups um, or unless they get involved in local army recruitment days or activities. Uh, a friend of mine from Woodcraft Folk who grew up in Sunderland, uh, near where I grew up, uh, said that her school sports days were in fact army days and the kids all had to fundraise in order to be able to take part in the sports days to bring in the army. So there's certainly a variety of ways in which a lot of children are only accessing what was previously seen as normal childhood through um, armed forces and increased militarisation. Um, and in, I, I first sort of came across this when I was growing up in Newcastle. Uh, I went to quite a normal state school, it was a comprehensive, so quite a cross section of different economic backgrounds and uh, me and quite a few of my friends it was expected that we definitely get A-levels, possibly go to uni as well, but there were certainly a lot of people where they'd be lucky if they come out of there with five GCSEs and for those people they were very much targeted by the military. We had careers fairs where you'd have uh, I think six stalls come in, one would be you could do hairdressing at Newcastle College, another would be you could go to Northumbria University and then the other four would be different branches of the military because those were your options. And we'd have, um, yeah, we had a cadet force set up in my last year at school and tried very hard to get rid of it. And we failed. And me and my sister, who's also here today, um, uh, campaigned quite hard because what we saw was us being, it being assumed that we had options that weren't being offered to other young people from where we were from. Um, I had the chance to move to London this year and I, I, I was starting university, which was really exciting. But a lot of people don't get offered that. And it, it was... While I am, to some extent, quite a pacifist, it's not that that bothers me so much. It's the fact that um, Newcastle doesn't have a lot of job opportunities. And what incentive is there for a government to put in more job opportunities if the way that they're going to recruit their army is out of kids with nowhere else to go? Um, and there aren't a lot of youth opportunities. Um, the local council recently cut the whole youth service. There is literally no youth service in Newcastle. Loads of libraries have been shut. My local library's been, or my <coughs> old local library's been shut. Um, where are kids meant to go, other than to the cadet forces, which they can access to free, the only bit of free youth work they can access. Um, and so, yeah, it's easy to draft them up. So this really pissed me off. And um, District Fellows is the 16 to 21-year-old branch of Woodcraft Folk. It's an age group that kind of runs itself. They say, we don't want adults telling us what to do. We're going to do it ourselves. So we run loads of events for ourselves. Um, which is great fun, and help out in local groups for younger kids. And we elected this as our campaign last year, um, to get the military out of schools, because we thought people were being shown uh, a version of the military that was unfair, that was unrepresentative, it was dishonest, 
and it was exploitive of the very, very poorest of our friends and classmates, and that was what we wanted to oppose. It was just that fundamental injustice, quite apart from anything else. Uh, so last year, well, this summer, we had a big camp called Venture Camp. There were about 700 people there, and a few people from the organisations represented here today came along. Um, and we, uh, it, it was basically like a big festival. Kids get to go camping by themselves without parents for the first time, 13 plus mostly, and um, listened to music, had a load of education, and we ran workshops around the ethics of science and how science funding works, STEM funding for, works these days. We had workshops around people screen printing their own propaganda, questioning uh, the, the posters they've seen about army, be the best, join up kind of thing. Um, we had debates, we had Forces Watch run a fantastic workshop um, all day for people. People made videos and learnt about how to make campaign videos. And most of all, kids just questioned what the hell was going on and demanded better youth work for not just those who um, were already had access to good youth work through us, but for, for all their classmates as well. Um, and one of the things uh, we're doing is we want to be quite proactive. Uh, a lot of us aren't academics in this field, so we're just trying to find our way and see what it is that we can do with our limited resources. Um, and we provide routes into a hell of a lot of educational institutions because quite apart from running our own groups, a lot of our leaders and a lot of our young people go to work in education as well. Um, and going to, to work in youth work, I, I, I was a youth worker briefly over last year. Um, and we, so we're producing a resource pack that, is, um, that provides workshops for leaders to use quite easily and for young people to use to teach their peers about issues around this. So uh, a plea from us to you is if you feel like at the end of this day you really want to do something about some of these issues, please approach one of us and say, I know something that could be really interesting and we'll help you craft that into a really exciting activity that can be distributed to potentially 15,000 people around the country. Um, and we want to make it accessible to teachers, if, if you're a member of Teaching Union, also we want to talk to you. Um, and uh, so we've been talking to teaching unions and associations about making, um, making this something where teachers feel more supported in, in taking a stand, because my teachers didn't feel able to do that. They had enough issues going on with their own pay and their own conditions. And the more support we can offer for people to speak out against this, um, the better. So what we're asking for most of all today is your support. So that when someone like me goes into a job, I was on Job Seekers Allowance briefly this year, and when you go into a job centre, you get two options when you go at the computers. You can click jobs, or you can click army jobs. And I don't think that is a thing that should, that any 19-year-old who is incredibly upset about their current state of finances and the state of their lives should be presented with. Um, and I was fortunate enough to get a waitressing job soon after, but for anyone who is looking for something more long-term without going to university, that shouldn't be the only option they're offered. And, yeah, so um, this session is um, working together to raise awareness and take action. So the action we'd like to ask you to take is to come and have a word with us about what you can contribute to the education we're trying to deliver around campaigning, around social justice, around peace, whatever it is that you know about, I'm sure you'd have a lot to add. So please to speak to me or Joe or Hoofy who are in the back. Little wave, guys. Um, and it would be really good to continue working together beyond today. Thank you.